Howdy folks. So today I find myself at home sick from work, so uh, unfortunately uh, I can't really do much. Um, I'm starting to lose my voice, so hopefully uh, hopefully I'm, it doesn't give out in the middle of this. Um, I, I thought I would uh, investigate my uh, 20 gigabit InfiniMan network, uh, make a little bit of a follow-up video, because um, I kind of left it hanging. Uh, once I discovered that bridging InfiniMan cards uh, wasn't possible. So I originally was just going to um, do some stuff with mounts, basically create a, uh, basically what I needed to do was be able to basically get um, data in and out of some VMs using something like Samba or NFS. So I thought it would just be easier to just sort of mount uh, through a, a virtual box, uh, you know, virtual file system and stuff. And uh, there's a whole bunch of problems with that. Uh, surrounding permissions, the the way that the VirtualBox um, virtual storage driver works uh, on the host side, it doesn't matter what permissions you give the files on the guest side. The host side will always have the same permissions, and they're the wrong permissions. Um, so it just it got really annoying. So I sort of gave up on that idea, and I uh, I sort of just said screw it, and I'll do it all with static routes. And I didn't really want to do it with static routes uh, at the beginning because it's kind of a pain in the ass setting them all up across all of the machines. But I did it anyway. Uh, you know, I had enough time. Uh, and uh, I'm pleased to announce that it's working. Uh, but there's a lot that I learned in doing this, uh, particularly about VirtualBox um, and how shit its, uh, its virtual network adapters are. So um, if you remember last video, uh, I was able to get about seven... Uh, a little over seven gigabits per second of data between my workstation and my, um, uh, or not between, yeah, between my, uh, my, sorry, not my workstation, between my file server and my uh, app server, which were connected together. And I was not able to access my f app server from my workstation. Um, so I added the static routes to uh, both of those machine, uh, mean machines to do that. And I also added, uh, I also started uh, uh, IPv4 packet forwarding, um, so basically just enabling routing essentially on my um, on my file server, and that enabled me to uh, basically directly access my app server from my workstation, which was sort of exactly what I wanted. Um, and the performance on that uh, is actually not. Uh, it's not great um, because, of course, you've got that extra layer uh, in there. So if I actually um, just do a uh, an iperf from this, so I've just got uh, you can tell that I've been working here because I've got uh, I've got iperf running uh, all the time here. So if I just start up an iperf instance here uh, on my app server, so we'll just do a server, and I'll set the window size to the maximum that's available which is still the default. I haven't done any performance tuning on this. So it's still 416 kilobytes. Um, it should be higher, it should be like eight megs, but whatever. And I'm gonna to go to my workstation and I'm going to uh, connect to that uh, directly now. And, God damn it, so much stuff on my desk. So. I can do uh, this. This actually does have the correct um, TCP window size uh, for an IB connection, and you can see that the performance is about four gigabits per second. So um, going through my file server drops the performance from seven down to four, um, which is expected, of course. I think we're sort of, um, yeah. I mean, I mean, there's so much overhead in this system; uh, it's kind of ridiculous. I mean, you start with 16 gigabits, and everything you do chops it down a little bit, but. Uh, I'm still okay with this. I mean, it's still better as long as it's higher than one gigabit per second. Technically, all is not lost, right? If it's if it's less than a gigabit, then it's kind of like why bother? So, the performance uh, is not bad here, but then I needed to get the VM involved, and um, the way that you would do this was with a um, basically a virtual uh, network adapter. So, uh, if I uh, I just have a web uh, basically PHP virtual box. And if we look at the settings for uh, one of my VMs here, what I what I did was I created a host only uh, network adapter. Um, so I created VBox Net Zero on my app server, and I uh, assigned that to this VM. 
And uh, you can choose a bunch of adapter types, but the fastest adapter type is the uh, basically the, the para, uh, para virtualized card. This is basically uh, it, it basically doesn't have any of the overhead um, that all the other cards have because it's not trying to emulate physical hardware. And um, so I I created this thinking you know this is supposedly the fastest uh, network card type that they have, and uh, I just sort of I set this up. I set up the static. IP addresses because I wasn't going to do deal with the PHP uh, uh, or the uh, uh, virtual box uh, virtual DNS server thing because I wanted to use static routes and of course static routes require static IP addresses um, so I just set all that up and I went to do a, a bandwidth test um, and I got uh, f- basically 500 like somewhere in between 500 to 600 megabits per second, um, which is half that of what I was getting before. I mean, right here, this 995 megabits per second, that's just gigabit ethernet. That's the regular um, ethernet adapter. So it's actually 50% uh, the speed of uh, what I'm trying to replace just using all the default settings. And I was incredibly baffled by this. Um, I, I just, I couldn't figure it out. And so I changed a whole bunch of things um, there's a few things that do have uh, an impact on the performance, um, both on the app server and on the VM. So on the, uh, oh, I guess it would help if I uh, stopped this. So if we just look at fconfig um, on uh, my app server, um, the VirtualBox uh, virtual network interface, I know I'm not screencasting this, I apologize, but I'm I'm too tired at the moment and uh, to, to bother with uh, doing any screen capturing. So anyway, uh, this is the virtual host only adapter. The first things that I did uh, was I set the MTU um, to support jumbo frames. And uh, I also increased uh, the transmission queue length from 1000 to 10,000, which is what I do on all of my uh, InfiniBand interfaces. And both of these had uh, an impact on performance. Uh, the jumbo frames had a significant impact on performance. Uh, we're talking about uh, 400% improvement by uh, enabling jumbo frames. The TXQ length did improve performance. Um, one thing you may be thinking is, what about going higher than 9,000? Make it over 9,000. Um, and because, of course, this is a virtual interface, you should be able to go higher than 9,000. And in fact, you can. So I attempted to set it to um, 65,520, which is what I use on the InfiniBand interfaces, that's the actual max of InfiniBand, basically try to match that. And that actually caused the performance to completely tank. Um, so it, it's not a good idea to exceed 9,000. It doesn't seem that this works very well at high, high, high MTU. So I left it at that. But uh, I was still not getting uh, any better than, you know, 700 megabits a second. Um, even with basically uh, the MTU and the TXQ length set the same on both the host uh, as well as on the on the guest. I was still getting performances, uh, you know, 600 and something megabits a second. It was terrible. So I was looking online and I came across a bug. And uh, this bug has been around um, for four years and it's still open. And it's called adding vCPUs degrades network performance. And uh, this VM has two virtual CPUs. It's a uh, quad-core machine. Well, it's dual-core with hyper-threading. But, uh, so I've, I've basically given the VM two cores, because why not? Uh, it doesn't need two cores, but again, why not? And uh, apparently, if you have uh, a second core um, on your VM, whether it's, even, whether it's even in use or not, you can actually hot unplug the core, and the performance still tanks. So uh, I thought, okay, well, I don't need two cores, so I'll just disable one of the cores. So I did, so the VM's running on one core. And now the uh, the performance uh, is about uh, 3.3 gigabits per second. So I've gone from you know 600 and something megabits to 3.3 gigabits just by disabling a core on the VM. So this bug is alive and well. Um, and it's a it's a serious one, in my opinion. Uh, that's horrible. Um, so 
I'm like I said, I don't need two cores. There's there's not a lot of CPU intensive stuff that this VM does. So I'm going to leave it the way it is and live with the four gigabits per second. Um, and basically, what I've done is I've I've tried to basically uh, I've tried iperf from my workstation uh, to my VM, so the, the basically all the way going through my uh, my file server, and I get this performance. And I've also tried going basically just from the host uh, app server to the guest, just to see if the bottleneck is the file server or if the bottleneck is the um, is the virtual interface. And the bottleneck is indeed the virtual interface. So uh, doing performance tuning and stuff on the on the host will not improve um, the the performance. It's it's basically VirtualBox's network driver that is the the limiting factor at this point. So uh, it seems to be that pretty much four gigabits is going to be the fastest that I'm going to be able to get uh, in a VM. Uh, but that's still four times better than what it was before, so I'm still happy. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much my uh, what I've been doing today. And uh, yeah, it, it was a success. Um, static routes were actually not that bad. So there was technically four hosts that had static routes. Um, there was my, because there's there are four machines in the setup. There's my workstation, my file server, my app server, and then the, the VM. So um, yeah, you have to have uh, static routes on pretty much all of them, uh, just so you can get both hops working properly. Um, but yeah, uh, everything works fine. So yeah, I mean, you can do this. Um, you will lose performance if you sort of daisy chain your InfiniBand uh, hosts together. And um, VirtualBox has pretty terrible uh, virtual networking, which I was not expecting. So uh, anyway, I guess uh, I guess it's good that I didn't uh, plan on it being uh, any faster than this because, uh, yeah, it just doesn't appear to be possible. I mean, I know VirtualBox is not really the, the highest performance uh, virtualization platform. I mean, that's if you need performance, you, you use VMware. Um, because that's that's where you know when you when you pay thousands of dollars to use VMware, you're paying for all those performance uh, enhancements, those little you know tweaks that have been done over the years. Um, VirtualBox is just sort of a free. It works, but it doesn't necessarily work the best. Um, and I understand that, and I don't really have a problem with that. So anyway, I'm just rambling now. Um, so in an effort to save my voice, I think I'm going to end this video now. Uh, just hopefully that provides closure to. Uh, to those who uh, who watched the previous video, uh, it did work out, and I just used static routes and uh, kernel IPv4 packet forwarding to get it all working. So, anyway, hopefully that was interesting. Thanks for watching.